you're here for the plan before you build information architecture and content strategy. I am Jim True. I am the support lead and community manager at the Pods Framework. We are a custom development content framework for WordPress. We're going to be talking about it very briefly inside the theme, so I'm not going to talk about it much right now. But that's my website, and that's my Twitter, and that is our website and our Twitter, and it's on the bottom of every screen. So what is content? Well, for any of you guys that have ever done client websites, it's one of the hardest things to get out of your client other than the paycheck is getting out the content. Because if you've ever worked with a client, you know this. It's like, well, can you get me your bios? Can you get me your service descriptions? Can you get me anything? And you'll, you'll know it. It's like pulling teeth. So, Content for the web is anything of substance that you need to share, promote, or provide information to your users about your business or services. It's basically your crucial information. I also popped in here a Wikipedia one from Information Architecture that the structural design of shared information environments, the art and science of organizing and labeling websites, internets, online communities and software to support usability and findability. The big words here, the ones that really matter to you, are shared information, organized, easily accessed, promotable, shareable, usable, findable, connected information. That's what content is. It's what drives the purpose of your website. Let's take Amazon as an example. What's the purpose of Amazon's website? It was honestly the very first, probably the very first, big e-commerce platform. But its primary job was to sell products, primarily. What does it do? How does it use its information organization to fulfill this purpose? Well, its product pages make it really easy to find other things that you might want to buy. You've noticed this. You've logged in. Whenever you buy something, your purchase history is there, and it re recommends a possible other item you might want to buy, or it looks at somebody else's purchase history, and it says, okay, well, based on their purchase history, there's some other items that these other people bought. Why don't you think about buying those? So all of that stuff works together to basically promote the product on the page and sell it. You know, the reviews that people make, the recommendations people make. And what it ends up doing is, is that the products ends up selling themselves. Amazon doesn't have to have a sales force. They don't have to have anybody out there doing sales work because the website does the work for them. It, the products sell themselves. Now get it, sorry about this next one because we have a little bit of a contrast issue. But I want you to look at this site, this page, it's a standard product page for WordPress, at least for uh, Amazon. And what the actual information is that's on here, the shareable information. Uh, you've got your media and photos in that section right there. You've got the title. You've also got a note there that says who the author is, so that I can easily look at other books by that author, which is informative. It's useful. I can look at, is this book part of a series? And that's information that you want to have available because that stuff ends up selling itself. Uh, it also has, obviously, the ISBN, who the creator is, any reviews and collections genre. We have our book format, pricing, offers, and sales. We have our down below, the product description, all the recommendations, all the purchase history comparisons. And then, of course, the price, the one-click purchase, really big selling points, the shopping list and the wish list there, because those are things that get you to remember the things you want to buy. And this is just an e-commerce site as an example. So if we were looking at this as a data model, the main content for their site are their products. It's the, and those are the kind of like the field, some of the field examples of what you would want to collect about the products. And if you've ever played with WooCommerce or if you've ever played with any shopping cart type software, you'll know that almost all of them have at least standard product information that you can store prices, pictures of products, uh, that kind of information. Well. Let's take it one step further. Uh, we're com uh, sorry, Amazon has actually collected additional subcontent. They've got additional media and photos, photos and media from like you. If you've bought a product and you've taken pictures of it and put it in a review, they've got your recommendations, they've got your purchase history. All of these other little items, all this extra information can be used to help upsell their products. And then they've got organizational information, stuff that helps you find the item you're looking for. So like when you're going on their site and you're trying to find a, a Sony TV or a Samsung TV, you know that the creator is a, you know, is a Samsung, so you know how to easily find it. 
All of this kind of stuff helps you organize the information. All of this kind of stuff helps you organize the content. And all of this organization helps you sell the purpose of the website. We're going to do another one of examples like this. Uh, when I did this slide the first time, I was out in Austin, Texas, and I was going on a, a long road trip. And this was one of the state parks that I was actually staying at, so I decided to throw it in the slide set because it was another example of a completely different purpose for a website. Uh, what is the purpose of a state park website? To increase park attendance. That is the most important thing they have to do. Uh, how do they do it? How do they use their information organization to help them fulfill this purpose? Well, park pages have information about park information, the amenities at their campsite, recreational activities, calendar events, weather, all manner of things like that, which help them basically help people make decisions about, yeah, I want to stay there because they've got horse riding and they've got like nature trails and stuff like that. So parks promote themselves. They don't have to hire people to always sit there on the phone answering all the questions. They don't have to create brochures because they've got a website to actually keep it all together. And here's one of their pages as information. And you'll see across the top, they've got multiple tabs for like fees and facilities, maps, nature history events. We call that basically the map fees, amenities, event calendar, history and reviews, content. They have park photos. They have camp information, contact details, hours, and social links. And very important, they've got a very easily accessed reservation system online. They also even tell you exactly when this camp area is going to be closed. So they even have like special notices and oh, yikes! <laughs> I swung my arm too fast. Hang on a second. There we go. We'll be back in late. There we go. Not that long, just momentary dead there. Okay, so if we organize this site, the most important thing we're collecting for this particular information model or data model is the state parks. We're going to store media and photos, maps and campsites, camper reviews, an event calendar, and the weather so that we can keep track of that information and connect it to our state parks. We're also going to do organizational stuff, the amenities in the region so that people can find what they're looking for when they're trying to make a camping reservation. And in this kind of a system, we've also got an external system, the reservations, and probably a MailChimp or some kind of like mailing list so that people can find out when things are going on at this particular thing. What are we talking about here? We're talking about content. Content is the key to your website designs, your website purposes. All of your content should drive the purpose of your website. All of it is there to help drive that function. You're looking at it as usable, searchable, organized content. I put that as usable, searchable because, and organized because search engine optimization is based on having a very well-organized data structure and well-organized content, content that isn't repeated, content that is connects to other content. And the content is data that you're trying to represent in a logical and structural way. And that's kind of what we've done with our data model. So here we have, again, Purpose feeds, your purpose informs your data, and your data informs your content. All of these kind of work together. Your content strategy is your purpose, because if you have a good content strategy, if your content strategy, if your purpose of your website is to sell products, then your content strategy should be everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm promoting, everything that I'm cross-selling and upselling is going to be pushing that particular purpose selling products. Your data model is based on that content strategy because that's the information you're going to have to collect in order to make that content strategy work. And your wireframe, which is what I did with those two little website pictures, that's typically how people are going to look at your website, how they're going to get that information. So you do the wireframe to help you figure out what your content model is. Your content model defines what data you're going to collect. Or if we take it one more step, they all work together by the well-structured information, which leads to more easily populated wireframes, which fulfill the purpose of your site and informs your well-structured information. All three of them work together. It's like you can't have one without the other, and they kind of all work together. So we're going to take this a little step further. How does this relate to WordPress? Well, WordPress is a content management system. That's its entire job. By a base installation, 
your content that you're managing is your posts, which is your blog posts, usually your news, articles, that sort of thing, and your pages, which usually most people use for like an about page, they might use for a staff page, they might use for you know some sort of kind of list like that. It's your content. You use your categories and your tags to organize those particular pages and posts. Well, we're talking about making it easier for our clients and ourselves to manage our content within WordPress. What if you managed all the content for a website within WordPress? You can. That's what it's for. Managing also includes displaying that content in multiple places on your site without repeating yourself. Like when you, as an example, if you're doing like a blog, a blog website, you enter in all your news posts and you have a widget there that shows all your uh, recent news articles and all your recent comments. All of that stuff is automatic. You don't have to sit there and cut and paste and put those into a page. They automatically show where they're supposed to show because you're managing your content in one place. You have a blog post. That blog post has comments. It automatically knows to pull recent comments from comments to put them there. It automatically knows to put recent posts in the place where they're supposed to go. Your menu is built based on your page identifications and stuff like that. So we're going to take this a step further because managing complicated sites like Amazon or like that Texas State Parks thing can't really be done with just pages, posts, categories, and tags. You could try, but you're going to be doing a lot of cut and pasting. Like let's, for instance, I'll step back again. That staff list I just said that you would be putting in a page. Well, what if you had to manage all your staff list on that one page and then you also had to sit there and take that staff list and I wanted to show when they were in and out of the office or maybe I wanted to have like a little list of like the phone numbers and stuff. But I've got it in a page, which means I've now got to recreate that in a widget or something of that nature. And that's just too much work. You know, you've got content. Why not just have a staff post type and boom, then that's where you manage your staff at. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Pages don't have all the additional fields you'd need. There's no way to differentiate on a page the different content types that you're storing on that page. There's also no way to easily segment part of the page to display in different areas on the website. So, and your categories, they work great for hierarchy, but there's no way to pick and choose the organizational model. And I'm going to, I hope I don't blow you guys' brainers away with the word taxonomy, but it's coming up shortly. I'll try to be nice about it. <laughs> Those of us that went to you know, uh, college biology classes and stuff like that, we know a lot about taxonomy, but the standard run of the mill human being does not. But, or hierarchy, that lovely word. But anyway, the idea is, is that genre isn't the same thing as color, and it's not the same thing as model. An author is not the same thing, or a publisher is not the same thing as a genre or a color. And that's what we mean by organization, is that when you organize things, you put them in little groups. Okay, and that's what taxonomy is. Taxonomy just means that we're classifying things in little groups of uh, common information. You have a blue shirt, you have a blue shirt, he has a blue shirt. Uh, you have blonde hair, blonde hair, blonde hair, blonde hair. <laughs> Did have blonde hair. Blonde hair. <laughs> exactly. So those are kind of the things, like your hairless types. You know. <laughs> exactly. So taking content management in WordPress one step further, Going back to our Amazon model, these things, the products, the media and photos, the offers and sales, the recommendations, the reviews, and the purchase history, those are called custom post types. They're a post type, just like a page or a post, but they're a special one. They're called media. They're called sales. They're called recommendations. Uh, those fields that you were also storing underneath the main content, every one of these, by the way, also has custom fields, but I just wanted to show one to not blow your brains away. And this last one, these uh, organizational items, these are called custom taxonomies. And they're not that hard to comp to create in WordPress. Uh, basically, custom post types are created with that lovely little bit of text there called register post type. And there's a link there which links over to the codex for WordPress. We're not going to talk about that at all because I know that when people see code, they start to freak out. I do. Uh, there are some plugins that allow you to create custom post types. That's uh, CPT UI is up there, types is up there, pods is up there, pods. Uh, custom fields, you get those into WordPress through register meta. There's a link for that. ACF, which is advanced custom fields and advanced custom fields pro. CMB2 types and pods all create custom fields for your WordPress websites. 
and custom taxonomy, register taxonomy. CPT UI, types, and pods all create taxonomies. What's the one common word there on all of those? Pods. <laughs> WordPress and pods. Pods is a content development framework for WordPress. It helps you grow beyond posts and pages. That's the whole point of it, is to help you take your WordPress website and add additional content to it that you can manage in one place. Oh, sorry, let me go back there on that one, my bad. Uh, there were some links at the bottom. Those two links at the bottom, that's where you get it on WordPress, but the one at the very bottom there, that YouTube video, it's gonna be on the slides and it'll also be on, uh, the slides will be a PDF, yes. So is Pods a plugin? Yes, okay. yeah. It's a, it's, we call it a Pods framework okay. because uh, it allows you to basically do quite a bit. But that video on the bottom down there is actually called Grow Beyond Posts and Pages. It's another talk I do, and it's a talk I did at St. Pete WordPress Meetup last year in August. And it's gotten a lot of good reviews, but it's, it talks about the whole process of how to like, why you need to do custom post types and why you might need to do all this other stuff. And it kind of goes through our process. Um, but how does pods help with content? Well, it helps you manage your custom post types, your taxonomies, and your custom fields all in one place without any coding whatsoever. It also allows you to connect content to content. This is a big one. Because when you create post types and you create, let's say, uh, here, we'll do a gym. Uh, you got a gym that has teachers or trainers. Gyms have trainers. They have classes that they run. And maybe they have, um, let me see, classes, trainers. Let me see, there might be something else there. A schedule. Okay, obviously they have a schedule. So you've got a class that's taught by this trainer over here. Well, what if I wanted to see all the classes taught by that trainer? Well, it's a kind of a complicated one. Well, those little things right there, that relationship field, is what allows you to basically do that. We do something that WordPress doesn't do. We do something that a lot of other plugins don't do, is that we allow you to create logical relationships between the content on your website and make it easy to, to display. So you can easily do a schedule of classes taught at a yoga studio, maybe. And this is the class name, and here's the trainer that teaches it. And you'd only have to enter the trainer once, and you only have to enter the class once. But then you write, you add on the schedule, well, I'm teaching that class on this day, this day, this day, and this day, and all of that other stuff, all that connection of data just happens because you've entered it that way. And that's what you want for your clients. You want to make it easy to enter information, and you want to make it easy to display information. And that's what we do. We also extend existing post types. So your user accounts, your media, your comments, your post pages, even post, custom post types from other plugins, we can also extend those. So it's very useful if you have like the event calendar by Modern Tribe, you can add additional functionality to it. I use it on our Tampa Bay WordPress meetup site to connect all of the talks we do with the speakers that teach them, the slides and the videos for them, that kind of stuff. So that I can have a one place, a one stop shop for all the content for our website. Uh, you can also easily prototype your content with pods templates with no code. And this is another thing. We're not going to go into this tonight at all. That's what the other video is for. But um, I did want to at least touch on it. So how do you plan your content with pods? You plan your content types based on your data model. You do that little chart of main content, subcontent, organizational stuff. And then you go in and say, okay, well, those are custom post types, so I'm going to put those in. And then those are taxonomies, I'll put those in. Uh, let me see what fields I need for each of those. So if I'm doing a trainer, I need their name, probably a picture, a bio, maybe their phone number, maybe their, you know, or something of that nature, maybe their history, I don't know. Uh, and for a class, I would need to know the description of the class, maybe some photo, photos for the class, that sort of thing. For the schedule, I need to know what day of the week it's taught on and what hour. And then all I really have to do is say, okay, well, what class do I teach on that hour for that day? And who's the teacher trainer for it? And I'm done. That's all the content I need for a training website. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, then you determine if you need to extend what WordPress provides. Do I need to make users more complicated or something of that nature? And then you determine where your connections will be, the relationship fields between your posts. So this is one other little bitty thing here. What's the difference between a taxonomy? I, love that. I can't even say it sometimes. What's the difference between a taxon taxonomy versus a relationship? Well, if your content can stand alone by itself, that means one author, one book. It should be a custom post type. 
connected to another relationship. So like you've got authors, you've got books, those are connected together as a relationship. This author can write multiple books. This book could be written by multiple authors. And that's kind of how you connect them together. If, however, it can only exist as a group of things, items are read, science fiction books or science fiction movies, or bald people, or blonde people, or blue shirt wearing people, or purple shirt wearing people. Those are groups of things. They don't exist by themselves. They can't exist unless they are a group of things put together. Those are organized as a custom taxonomy, like a class of students. A class of students doesn't actually exist without the students in it. So what kind of content do you have? And here's where we get interesting. Uh, this is when I basically ask you, what kind of projects or websites are you guys working on? And let's come up with a data model form. Don't be shy. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to be one of the first ones. Right, uh, right. Well, well Let's talk um, about your Guten, Gutenberg Times Gutenberg website. Times yeah. Well, it's pretty much um, updates. Can you see the screen, by the way? Because I'm making. I can see the screen. Okay. Can you still see it? <laughs> right. Okay. You're not gonna move to TV set, right? No, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of some of the stuff on the side here so that you can have a little more room so, to. So uh, Gutenberg Times started out as a curation um, site where put together blog posts and. Uh, um, Twitter uh, tweets and pictures from all kind of different sources into a Storyfy. Um, Storyfy is um, a tool that helps you with that because it has searches and um, you can uh, pull this all in. Now Storyfy, and it's every time you have something that is on a third-party platform, yeah, it might be. Uh, that you have it for about two years, three years, five years, even six years, but sooner or later the company that owns that platform makes a decision to um, <coughs> to, to discontinue the service. So now all everything is kind of storified, where do I go? And putting it on up on a website was um, the, the, uh, pretty much the, the idea of Gutenberg Times to do the same thing. And put it up there. So as a primary purpose, you'd probably say aggregate all the news and information about different plugins and themes and how they're getting uh, doing compatibility with Gutenberg? Right. That's one thing. It's also yeah, the whole discussion about Gutenberg. Yeah, okay. It's very polarized. Um, it's also just kind of, okay, I find this neat thing and here's a little video um, about how Gutenberg works. Yeah. So it's not the taxonomy, it's, um, it's actually just blog posts. Right now? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's take it one step further. Okay. okay. So you know that your primary information is, is that every... So what we see is not this. this. Okay. Yeah. Right. So Gutenberg Times, purpose right. to aggregate plugin and theme information, news and updates about Gutenberg. Right. So we're going to take the... Um, we're going to call this... Your primary data set is your news, is your news and articles. Right. So that's... That's obvious. But what if you also collected uh, some information about plugins? Like, were they compatible with Gutenberg yet? Yeah. Were they, uh, what's their proposed date to be compatible with Gutenberg maybe? What's the link for their plugin on the repo? Right. Um, yeah. Who's the main contact person? You know, stuff that people ask you because they say, well, is that one ready yet? <laughs> that kind of thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then what you end up doing is, is that, yeah, you could do the taxonomy that would show the plugin and the plugin name, but you, as you are presently with WordPress, you'd have to go categories, plugins, and then go each of the plugin underneath there, and that would get really overwhelming. Right. So the better idea would be is to that when you when you post your news article, to go in and say related plugin and type in the plugin mm -hmm. name, and then fill out a screen for it with all the other information. And then you enter that plugin's information once, mm -hmm. and you never have to touch it again unless it changes. Right. And the same. I don't know if you are you doing themes too, or just plugins. Uh, plugins, themes. Okay. Um, and what about the issues? Tomorrow? What about um, Information sources, like um, 
Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. My bad. Uh, like uh, where the information is coming from, like other like, other websites and stuff like that. Other, other websites. Yeah. So you've got themes. We're gonna take this down a bit. All right, we'll go one more. You like me really well. I'm sorry. It's what I do. I can't help it. Ah. I try to sit there and build functionality based on you know. Uh, where can you basically? I want to make it so that you don't have to enter additional information, but once you do it, then you can easily create a, from doing it this way, you can go to a plugin, let's say the plugin was uh, Gravity Forms mm -hmm. and their Gutenberg integration, and you've got maybe 20 articles out there that have been connected to updates about Gravity Forms, because they've done a lot of videos, they've done a lot of stuff. Well, I can easily go to a Gravity Forms page and I can show all of their articles, and that's really hard to do. If you're using it as a tech, I mean, you could do it with a taxonomy, but yeah, or you just do it by hand. Or, yeah, I mean, who wants to do anything by hand? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's kind of the thing. I don't think we really need to add any additional organizational stuff, but if you want, I mean, because the standard categories probably cover it for you. Yeah. You don't really need to add that much additional stuff, but that kind of gives you an idea of what you might be covering underneath your blocks. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, plugins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean media. I mean if there's any other media, but I mean that's really covered underneath news articles too. Yeah. I mean if you did any, the other thing would be like you take that functionality a little bit further. I, I always think about this when I talk about blog sites and websites that do news and stuff. Um, it's a different thing when you do a case study as when you do like maybe a feature highlight on someone and you kind of break up how a newspaper is organized. And yeah, you could do all of that within categories and tags and WordPress, but couldn't you do it better if you had just a little bit more information? Right. So, and that's and like or your staff. My God, a staff page is like it's one of the first things I do on every site I build for a client, or when I used to build sites for clients. I still sometimes do, but not very often. Yeah. Uh, is have a staff page because you need that bio picture, the name of the person, what they what their title is, and a little bit of a bio and their email addresses and phone numbers, and maybe you don't show that, but it's there. But then when that person gets fired or, or leaves or what have you, just take that staff member out. You add a new staff member, plug it in, boom, your staff list is updated. It's automatic. It just happens. And that's kind of the why you would use stuff like this. So, so instead of having a page that lists all the staff members, so you're literally going into something that says, here's all the staff people, you just uncheck a box. And yep. just I'll give you an idea. Here, I'll show you. I'll give you an actual example. Here's a website that's a dentist office, or uh, sorry, eye care, eye care office. Boy, that's really good. <laughs> so close. So close. It was just right there. So yeah. Uh, anyway, they have two primary staff members, the optometrist and the optician, and they have their optometric technicians. Yeah, I could do this entire thing in a page. I sure could. Not a problem. But I could also let me show you real quick. We'll pop in there and hopefully I can log in because I remember what the login is, but we'll see. Uh, you log a username. It's probably that one. What do you know? Hey. Nope, maybe not. <laughs> Tried really hard there, Jim. For Jim. It's got to be that one. Come on. There we go. Don't worry about anything not being updated. It hasn't been updated in a while, but that's okay. Staff is right there. It's a post type. And you've got each of the people. You've got their name, their picture. Uh, when you click on them, like that person was fired. <laughs> so she's not there anymore. But when you click on these guys, all we're really storing is uh, she doesn't have a bio, but the other two do. That's why we have the bio screen there. And we'll hide the Yoast crap because it's pointless. Uh, Optech, their title, and are they primary or not? So if she hires another, uh, you know, um, what do you call it, ophthalmologist, boom, they're in there. And that's all I have to do. I also have frequently asked questions in here so that they have that entire page is driven by the frequently asked questions post type. And that one's easy. It's just a question and an answer. So your question is the title for the WordPress post, and the answer is just the edit box. So what can I do if I suffer from itchy eyes? I, I do this. <laughs> you know, that's just, oops, sorry, that's HTML. You don't look at that. You don't look at that. So it's like, what do what can I do if I send from Brian and GIs? Simple, frequently asked questions. Easy place to put it, easy way to add it to a website. And I did this site honestly in about two hours. The hardest part was the styling. 
doing all of that theme stuff. So if we, if we look at a kind of a long-term, mm -hmm. short-term thing, easy, easily short-term-wise, it's just put it on the page and you're done. When you're looking at the long game of this, yeah. having custom post type is the best because you can be able to put on multiple pages, and as you change that information, it dynamically changes it on multiple yeah. pages. I could add a widget. Uh, let's say we had a stat, let's say it's a salon or a spa, or a salon is usually probably better, right? a salon and spa that has 20 to 30 different stylists and estheticians and all that kind of stuff. And you've got them all entered in, and they're all user accounts on the web website, and you've got it linked together to the services they do because you know that's what we do. Um, well, let's say we had a widget and they logged into their user profile and they clicked a box and said, I'm working today. They just check a box. And then over here on a widget, you just show all the staff members that are working with that. That kind of stuff. There's so much functionality that you can do like that. And this is stuff the client can manage. That's the nice thing about it because they're used to working in WordPress. They're used to working in pages and posts. So it's not complicated for them to see the same screen and go, oh, okay, I'm editing a fact. Okay, I'll just add in the question and the answer and I'm done. So when you go to set this up, is there any kind of wizard or system that allows a person to kind of understand this from the start? Because it can We're not going to go into that one on this one because that's really what that Grow Beyond Posts and Pages does. That's what my plugin does, but I really want you to get uh, less thinking about the technologically, how do I do this on the website, and more thinking about the content you want to collect. So like when you take on a job for a website, try to look at the function of that website and add more functionality, because the more functionality you add to a site, the more that you can charge for that site, the more value you add to the client by doing that site for them. Let's take, um, uh, let's see, is it Bill? No. What was your name again? Martin. Martin. Okay. Let's take your site, the the site for the music play. NaplesMusicClub.org. Okay. Or well, I'm not going to go into that right now. <laughs> I'm more going to look at just the, or, the what content you're currently storing and how you can add additional stuff to it. So we'll take. Uh, let me see this real quick. Let me see here. My brain is like going. I'm used to not doing this on the same screen. Nope, not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Hang on, I know what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, so this is the Naples Music. Oops, did not want to do that. Either. Naples Music Club. There's two, yeah, two C's in there together. Two C. Well, I'm just. What's the actual business? Na Naples Music Club. That's correct. Okay. You can All right. So your purpose is to let people know about when you're doing music events, concerts. concerts. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you guys do like uh, tutoring, musicians teaching other? There are uh, volunteers or members, we call them, who are teachers. Okay. So, uh, music teachers, music gotcha. Teachers. I have a list of studio teachers categorized under what they teach uh, on one page. So it's just an informational page. Okay. Contact them by okay. So right off the bat, your primary purpose for the site. Do you do like blog articles and stuff like that right now? Uh, blog, uh, blog articles, uh, blog posts? Uh, we do posts mainly. Only about the concerts and stuff coming yes, up? Yes, to inform or the results of what happened to describe the concerts afterwards. Okay. We're not going to call that your primary. We're actually going to, because I mean, I think the function would be, do you guys make money when uh, the teachers are teaching other yes, classes? We, we can, we, it's a free concert. We give concerts by members who are musicians. Right. And, any, and we collect donations at the time. It's free concerts. Um, the money is you, our money is spent on music education. Okay. So we volunteer our time to put on concerts that get money. Right. And we use that money for uh, providing scholarships to students, music okay. lessons to students. Okay. So you, you're basically, you're primary function is to get more membership. Well, yes, correct. Yeah, more membership and more money, people spending money to, uh, you know, for that kind of a thing. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, 
it's value add is what it comes down to. I try to like get, I always try to like sit there and think when I'm looking at people's websites and their functions and the, and the process of a website, I try to sit there and say, what's the function of the website? What does it do for me that I don't have to hire an employee to sit over there and do for me? So it basically provides information for people to see that we have a good cause yep. and to give a list of events where they can attend and hopefully say, this is great, I'm gonna actually give you money. <laughs> The uh, entertainment value. Make it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna drag that down. Okay, so you know, you've got a little bit of both because you actually have classes. Is it one-on-one -on -one instruction? Uh, yes. Okay. One -on -one. Mm -hmm. so okay. The listing of teachers is a service for the teachers. Right. Although people who visit the website may be looking for a teacher. Right. So, so it's a value add for your ins for your instructors then. Gotcha. Okay. Well, in this kind of a situation for you, right off the bat, I would definitely do instructors. Um, probably do the classes available or the instrument. Well, uh, well, although the it's a minor thing that we provide a listing of features that. The general public would look up if they wanted to learn to play the clarinet. Right, um, or if they've got a student, or if they've got a kid in school who needs some specialized instruction on the clarinet, that sort of yeah, thing. That's okay. a benefit to the visitor, but okay. that's not our main purpose to provide that information. It's just, I got gotcha. you. It's something we can do. Okay. We're, we're really looking for people to support, attend our events, and give us money. Okay. Attend your events and give you money. Do you keep like a membership sponsor role, that sort of thing? Uh, we do. Okay. Um, do you have a plug-in that you're doing that with, well, or what? Um, let's see. We do, we have a, a. I know. Is this boring, guys? I don't want to bore you guys. It's, it's, <laughs> we don't keep our membership records through WordPress. Okay. We have a database management. Yeah, that's what kind of what I figured. So yeah, you've got an external system that feeds yeah. that system, and then you keep track of because. Everyone has to have the list of, if they have that kind of a website, they have to have the list of their pillar sponsors and their other sponsors and the other sponsors. Does that come from that database system? Um, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> some, some of it does. Okay. Some of it is directly put into WordPress. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the thing. Any, basically what you want to think about is anytime, especially when you're talking to someone who may be managing their own website, is ask them the stuff that they don't like doing, that they have to maintain complicated ways like that. Like an alphabet, alphabetized list of people, an alphabetized list of sponsors is a nightmare to maintain as a text file that you're typing into. Think about it. It's ugly. <laughs> you wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to do it. But as we've grown, mm -hmm. uh, we, since we're an all-volunteer organization, we, we're looking for the point, the tipping point, when we really need to get professional help to pay somebody to do it. Uh, yours, I would say, look at the Give WP log uh, plugin. Uh, Give WP. I'm going to drop it over here. Um, uh, yeah, hang on. I'll just add it here. <laughs> it just makes sense. We'll call it Give WP because it's going to be your donors. Basically, Give WP is a uh, donations and collections website or plugin to help you manage a nonprofit website and collect donations and all of that kind of stuff. It handles all of the e-commerce part, it handles all of the forms back and forth, it handles all the subscription and donor levels, the whole bit. It's awesome. He's wearing the shirt for it right now, actually. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's a free plugin. It's a free plugin that has most of its functionality in the free side of the plugin, but it does have additional things you can purchase to make it more powerful. Um, I love it. It's it's really well maintained. They've got a great group of people. They do a lot of nonprofit stuff. And anytime that you're, anytime you're going to take on a project that is totally volunteer based, where you have no money and no funds. I point people to give WP because you can build a site pretty quickly that does the most important thing that you have to do, which is to get money. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I would suggest. I do like the idea, though, of actually creating another post type for instructors and so that you can easily track down, uh, you know, easily list them and manage them, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe charge them for 
having a, a, a listing on your site. So that kind Basically of thing. do they have to have a teacher membership which costs twenty five dollars folks. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Let me check. Let's see, I don't need that one there, so we're gonna get rid of that one. So yeah, your primary is your events and concerts, but honestly your primary based on this is I'm gonna move this over here. Your primary is actually your donors. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the absolute most important thing on your website. That's the purpose of your site, is to increase donor memberships. Yeah. Okay, so are you going to tell us what this wireframe software is? Um, oh, if you wanted to know, yeah, this is Sketch. This oh, is what okay. I'm using. It's called Sketch by Mac. Uh, okay. I use it for prototyping, all kinds of stuff. Okay. I use it for graphic design. I use it for okay. everything. It's yeah. Specifically for. Oh no 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 no. Okay. I, I built this. Wireframe type of thing. Yeah, it's actually really good for that uh, because it lets you create symbols like I've done. Basically, I used to do this when I had, I've done this talk twice before and I've used a whiteboard and most people couldn't read my handwriting and then I didn't, I couldn't have anything to give to the people afterwards if they had a question. Okay. So I like this methodology better because I can very quickly draft a structure for you guys and then if you want to take it with you or you know, that kind of thing, we can throw it in the slides and you'll have it available. So. And then, so then, is this like you're going to work this out, and then you're going to hand it to the client and say, "Now this is going to help for them to get up." Um, the this is your data model. This is your data model. It's kind of where you look at, kind of like when you're sitting down with a client and you're asking them the questions at the beginning when you're talking about, well, why do you want a website? Because you know, that's always the first question you ask the client. Why do you want a website? And they go, well, I just because everybody has a website. <laughs> And you go, no, why do you need a website? What is like, it's a, okay, it's a restaurant. And you go to the client, and the client, and the client contacts you, says, I, I gotta have a website for my web restaurant. I said, yes, you do. You do have to have a, web rest, a, client, a website for your restaurant. All it needs is a phone number, an address, the hours, the menu, done. Some pictures of the food. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what most people are looking for when. Yeah, happy hour. You know, but yeah, and it needs to be totally responsive and sits out on a phone so that they can easily find the phone number first, the address, the menu, the hours, because that's what people are looking for when they're looking for a res restaurant information. Uh, the other stuff is fluff. It's great, but it's not the most critical thing in the world. Um, then, of course, you know, you talk to, what was the one? I had, a, I had an insurance agency person that talked to me. He says, why do you people charge so much for WordPress websites? And I said, okay, what is your website doing for you? He says, well, it's got our information. It's got a contact form. And the form kind of like, you know, ask them the question I want to ask them. And then it, it lets me know, kind of like a lead generator. It's kind of like my lead generator. And I said, okay, so you've got a lead generator that works for you for 24-7, 365 a year. It never stops working. It's there all the time. How much would it cost you to have an employee sitting in that desk doing that for you? And I said, that's why the website is that valuable. And if it's not providing that value to it, then you don't need it. He got it. That's usually all it takes. I did a site for a particular business that was primarily their entire purpose in being. Yes, the website did a lot of other stuff. But the primary purpose for that website was to get lead generation for their franchise opportunities. That was primarily it. And they had a very specific configuration. Their franchise opportunities were based on shared commercial kitchens or commercial kitchen. So think along the lines of someone who had a restaurant and they don't want to build another restaurant, but they want to share their, their commercial kitchen. Well, I'm looking for commercial kitchen franchise opportunities. That was the SEO tag. So everything I did on the rest of the website, everything else I collected, was designed to drive the information to that lead generation form for that franchise opportunities. One of every two people that landed on that page completed the form. That is an unheard of, yes, 50% lead generation because it was a good franchise opportunity. When you think about it, it's like, if I've got a kitchen and I don't want to build a restaurant, what, do I, what am I looking for? Something that I have to do no work on. All I want to do is like create this thing that's open 24-7 and people just are banging down the door to get into my kitchen and do their work. 
and that's a shared commercial kitchen. We have one here, I think, actually. So yeah, your pro, your pro kitchen, I think, is the one that's down here. So yeah, there's a couple of them, but that's kind of it. And that was the whole reason for the website. And that's kind of how you have to think on things, is that your job when you're creating websites for people is to figure out how do I add more value to the site? And that's how I'm able to bill for what I built for it. Okay, makes sense? Um, anybody else got a project that they want to kind of like flip on the whiteboard? Go for it. I'm going to zoom this out and make me another dupe. <laughs> I think. Let me see. I thought I did this one. Let me see. This is sort of like group therapy. That's, that's how I often look at it, yes. It's exactly like group therapy, yes. Okay, there we go. And we'll zoom that in. Okay. That's what I was doing wrong. I knew it was something. <laughs> okay. What's your, web, ah, what's your web project? Um, Marie owns Naples Olive Oil Company. Whoa, that's a lot. Simplify that. It's, uh, what is it? Naples Olive Oil. Not Naples Olive Oil. Okay, got it. Okay. What's the purpose of the site? Uh, to sell olive oil. Just to sell olive oil? Um, is it, I mean, are they going to be doing like an e-commerce site? Yeah, it's an e-commerce site. It's an e-commerce site, okay. Um, to sell olive oil. What is special about it? What's special about their olive oil? There's got to be more than just to sell olive oil. There's got to be something that draws people to that. So we have gourmet olive oil um, that comes in a variety of flavors. So it's olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Okay. Um, so there's silver... So it's olive oils and balsamic vinegars. Yes. Um, do you guys collect like recipes and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the blog is set up as a recipe. Pretty much it's all recipes on the blog. Okay. All right. Hang on. I think you're going to be wanting, I think you're going to be wanting to do. I'm just thinking in my head. Um, let's see. Data box. I'm going to go with blue this time. I'll change your colors around. Hang on. All right. So your primary item is the products. That's the biggest thing. But so you said you've got like so articles and olive oil. Oh, we don't have to break it down. Okay. Yeah, I don't need to go that far because okay. the main thing is it's the products. You're trying to upsell the products. So the goal would be on this one is to create a, your sub content types. In this case, are going to be probably you've got you know you've got news articles. That's one. I'm going to call that one main subcontent. So you know you're going to have recipes. If you had them connected, um, so that if you ever used a specific one of your products in a recipe, you could actually, I mean, do you have that now? Where you're on a product page and you can easily see all the possible recipes that you've collected based on that one? Yeah. How are you and doing that? On the recipe page at the bottom, there's like a product widget so you can go back to the product. Okay, so you've got pretty much got what you need. Done through some widget that does like negative menus or something? Okay, yeah, that works. As long as it works and you've got connection there, that's good. I mean, the only other thing that that's the easiest way to upsell something, especially when you're talking about a food item, is recipes for that food item. That's, I mean, because there really aren't much any other sources. I mean, other, other, Use, uses for olive oil and balsamic vinegar. <laughs> so it's uh, when you're the main thing you'd want to do is make sure that your your recipe pages were Google optimized so that they actually would shop would pop up for all the for like recipe searches. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, you'd want to make sure, and you can you can tell if it does that by looking. What you're looking for is the oh god, Chris. What's the thing from Google that you geo, not geo, but what's the Google thing that does the little structure for Google so that they know what it is? Schema. 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 Thank you. <laughs> that was the word I was looking for. Schema. 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 Yeah, schema. That's it. You want to make sure that your recipes are doing schema for the. S C H E M A. Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure that it's doing the schema for recipe collection because there's a very specific structure for that. Um, schema.org. Schema. I'll just put that on there then. Yeah. 
And y'all won't guarantee that you'll have the picture show up, though. No, but there's a lot of work you can do with that one. But it's, yeah, the main thing is is that when you're doing like recipe searches, mm -hmm. think along the lines of who the other people are looking for recipes, and then they'll come across and they go, oh, I've never heard of that balsamic vinegar before. That sounds pretty cool. Kind of like tailor your recipes so that they look more like a recipe blog or like one of the you know recipe blogs. <laughs> yeah. And then that might make those stand out more. I mean, it sounds like you're doing what you need to do. I don't see anything. I wouldn't make many any other recommendations other than those. Uh, if you you know add a staff page for you know the people so that there's a personality to it. If it's a smaller company and it's family owned or something of that nature, uh, definitely do stuff like that, like grandma's recipes or mama's recipes or you know nana's recipes, that kind of thing. What about reviews and testimonials? Good one. Thank you. Ha ha. Somebody else had some ideas. <laughs> Thank you. I can't think of all the data models. I try my best, but whoa, that's weird. Okay. There we go. So reviews and testimonials, that's a good one. Yeah, because not all, I don't think WooCommerce and all those have that built in automatically, so sometimes you might have to add that those yourselves. Okay. That's a very good one. WooCommerce actually has a review add on. Yeah, but that's the thing. You, you, you start adding on add-ons and add-ons and add-ons and add-ons. Yeah, and especially if you don't have the money for it. Because WooCommerce is free. It's the add-ons that cost. So, and organizational-wise... You can have, basically just comes in as a current on the free version. We'll call that one organizational... Uh, maybe a recipe club. Or, or maybe... Like from your purchasers? Hmm? You said in the news? Yeah, those are your, your uh, press. That's that word. Uh, but basically, that's another one too, is however you're managing your, your mailing list for them. Um, if you're using like MailChimp or something of that nature. Like when your folks buy stuff or maybe have them send in their recipes, user submitted recipes, recipe club, maybe they get like a regular email on a regular basis, food ideas, that sort of thing. So. so we're currently using constant contact. Can you recommend any other one? I prefer MailChimp, but that's just me. I never, I, a lot of people started with constant contact, so that's what they're used to. Want to do more internet marketing? Uh, honestly, I've always used MailChimp. I just have. It's got better integrations with most other software, whereas mm -hmm. Constant Contact doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's limited, very limited. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's good, it's for, but that's for most people. It's because they were using it before yeah. they came over to WordPress or something. And for folks that don't want to spend anything, Constant Contact doesn't have a free plan at all. And MailChimp's is quite. I mean, is really nice. And even they added automation to to the uh, free plan. So in your organizational, primarily you're going to be talking about like um, regions, you know, where they came from, mm -hmm. origins, that kind of stuff. You'd be talking about um, organic, like if they have organic. Yeah. Oil, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of like a, a, a quick one. Yeah. When you think about stuff like that, it's like anything you can help to add to the faceted search, like you have on Amazon. You know, any ways to like pin down the thing. So if I'm looking for a uh, olive oil that pairs well with a wine, or pairs well with a specific food type, or fish, or something, or like you know, balsamic pretty much always pairs well with tomatoes and stuff like that. But yeah. You, know. you mentioned Amazon earlier, but uh, one of the things that's nice about it is if you're looking for price ranges. Mm. So if you give us under $30 for Yeah, all of those usually are built into your your Word, your WooCommerce site, your, uh, so you don't really have to like rethink those. Yeah, I'm mostly trying to think of things that are outside of WooCommerce that wouldn't normally be in there. So like the Origins is definitely one, but I'd say like food pairings, wine pairings. Um, and then of course, you know, all the organization that you would do around the recipes as well. So like entrees, you know, that, that kind of thing, food type. So uh, wine pairings, and then maybe we'll add one more. And we'll call that one uh, meal type, menu type, menu item, da, 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 da. <laughs> entrees, etc. There we go. That I can't spell today, apparently. OK. Did that help? Yeah. OK, cool. No problem. Next. I know we got another one. 
dead quiet. <laughs> Absolutely dead quiet. Go ahead. Um, kayaking in Florida. Uh, what? Kayaking in Florida. Kayaking in Florida? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of neat sounding. Is it already an existing website or when it's your yeah. building? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll call this one Kayaking in Florida. I can already think of several in my head. Uh, so what is your primary purpose for the site? My main purpose is to, for, to be a one-stop shop for anything kayaking. Okay. I like that. Do you guys like, um, do you have corporate sponsors or product sponsors or vendor sponsors for like kayaking, kayaks and paddles and <laughs> stuff like that? No, no sponsors. I guess it's more, the business is more, it's the website business. So it's where you would get clients like guides and kayaking businesses okay. to purchase advertising and Okay, so you're basically listing for them folks that do different kayaking tours and stuff like that? Yeah, okay. for them, like, and they can put the, all their information on there. Okay, so your your actual primary purpose is, yes, it's a one-stop shop for everything kayaking, uh -huh. but your actual purpose is to get ad buyers. Yes, you're right. And, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, what you call it, directory listings. Okay. Yes. Because they pay. Okay. All right. So that's content box. We'll throw another one out here. So we know that our main content that you're going to be storing is going to be directory listings. Probably. Primarily. But we're going to expand on that quite a bit. So, or advertisers. I never want to call them advertisers because they don't like that term either. They don't like it. No, no they don't, they're not advertisers. They're specialists. They're they are directory listing people. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, my synonyms are going out the window. My thesaurus is broken today. I'll call it directory. That's fine. That's the main feat. Okay. So you know your subcontent there is going to be. Um, well, I can already tell you some. Let's see. I'll do. And if I do this again, I'm going to make this part a little faster because it's just a little slow. I'm going to focus on organizational for you first, and then we're going to start talking about other stuff. Because the main thing for you is you need to know regions and cities and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I want to change your color here. Let's make you in purple. Here we go. Is that too bright? It's <laughs> fine. Okay. Oops. You go to the back. Where? There it is. Send it back. Nope, not that far back. <laughs> God. Sorry, guys. We almost get lost on my computer. Huh? We're not the. I'm not the only one that does it. No. Come on now. Where'd you go? Oh well, we lost it. Well, I'll fix it before we do this. I'm not going to waste any time with it. So you know that you need. Uh, you go back over there, and you go back over here, and this will be called regions. And I would actually call this. I'd almost say like a zip code directory, but not that tight. We have it like. Um North, South, Northeast, North, 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 North. Yeah, I've got um, I've got a friend of mine who did a yoga directory for the state, and she did the same kind of thing, but she broke it down into like those main regions and then like the cities, so that kind of thing. And maybe that's probably best is like region and I'll call it region cities. Yeah, um, I'm gonna recommend right off the bat for you if you're not using it yet, a plugin like Facet WP. Yeah. It allows you to do basically faceted search just like WordPress does or like uh, Amazon does and most of the other big websites. Um, it allows you to make it really easy for the people coming to your site to find what they're looking for. 
So like if I'm trying to find a kayak instructor or a guy that does kayak tours or a kayak this or kayak that okay. in Pinellas County and St. Pete or something, I want to be able to type in the city location and da 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 they're all up there. So that's kind of the biggest piece of it. So your directory is the person uh, who's doing it or the business, correct? Yes. Okay. You would have um, the types of things that they offer, probably. Yes. Like the um, types of activities, I'll call it recreational uh, recreational mm -hmm. activities too clear activities. Activity, yeah, guys, yeah. Um, stuff you would be storing would be like the hours of their business, the phone number of their business, the location, main contact, that sort of thing. That can all be stored in the directory. Okay, right. um, yeah, your regions and cities would be a taxonomy. It's really easy to do that. You just make it hierarchical. You go, uh, you know, kind of like your categories in WordPress where you have like main and then you can put some stuff underneath it. You kind of do the exact same thing. You do like your regions and then the cities underneath. Activities, you just track them all. And then that way, because that's what most people are looking for. Wow. You know, they're looking for kayak rentals. Okay, that's an activity. They're looking for stuff like that. Okay. And that's, I mean, those are the big ones. As far as your subcontent, I mean, for promotion, you could do um, offer them like an event calendar would be something possible. Yeah, we have one out there. Okay. All right, hang on. Let's bring the front. Do they have access to it? Yes. Okay. Um, do they write articles and stuff? Um, we try to promote that, yeah, but it's, it's, we don't have, I mean, it's just started out. I mean, it's what I would, so I mean, my thought what I would do is um, kind of like do a feature. Okay. You know, kind of treat it just like a, a newspaper or a magazine, or maybe once a month you do a feature on one of your directory members. Okay. And talk we about it. Well, we're using positive contact right now. Okay. And we do that as a spotlight guy, but it's hard to grab him. Yeah. Yeah. Them, so. yeah. That's the hardest thing is to get content out of people. <laughs> yeah. That was the word you were looking for. Directory member, not advertising. Yes. Yeah. Directory member, not advertiser. Yeah. yeah. You never want to tell them that they're actually an advertiser because they don't like that. So, um, does that help? Okay. Cool. All right. Any more? Okay. So, one of my companies does. 3D architectural renderings and animations. Okay, so 3D architectural renderings and animations. Wow. Okay. You you can keep talking. I can so I can follow. The best way to kind of I'm thinking on the way that you're doing this is the, the, the data model might be similar to what Agfor does, just in, in ordering some some model. Basically, when architects and interior designers want to find any kind of project that they're working on, they want to show the pre-visualizations. Oh, they're doing the pre-visualizations of like, uh, like of a studio or like an interior design work job. Yeah, or something. So basically, if this if Benchmark was up here, they want to show this room like what was built. Okay. Okay. So, so we work on exteriors, interiors, animations. Um, but our, pretty much targeted to that architectural our thing. Is mostly on interior designers, architects, and uh, developers. Okay. Developers as in like developing community, not like program developers. Right, I knew what you meant. Okay. So in your case, the the primary draw would be I mean it's it's an SEO thing. You're trying to get those architects and stuff like that to find you. You know, because that's what they're looking for. And what helps them make the sale? It's an area I've not really. I, I have like a. I have a, a crazy amount of like knowledge about just about everything, but I don't have a knowledge about everything. <laughs> so what helps them make the sale for? What Becca? helps them make the sale first of all is the the, the visuals. So the okay. first and foremost. So um, it is going to also be what I'm learning quickly uh, recently is creating the story of how of why using our visuals okay. are important in different stages. For example, if you have, it's nice to have a rendering of this area, but it doesn't tell the person coming into here why I should be in this specific location. Hmm. You know, something that says, like, I'll give you an example, there's a development over here called Kalia Bay. So, Kalia Bay wanted to 
show what their five story buildings, I'm sorry, their, their five towers look like off of Wiggins Pass. And so where our goal was is to show that kind of lifestyle and what it would feel like to be on the rooftop overlooking the sunset over Wiggins Pass. Okay. So this is kind of evoking an emotion. Yeah, to put you in the space. Yeah, so if you spend a million and a half dollars on a condo, you want to know that, that you're coming into something that's beautiful and it's... Yeah, I mean, that know, makes sense to me. Is like That's why you would render it in that way, and then that allows them to get to get the architect to get the money to get the building to get the things. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, kind of get it. It's like this all kind of like chain of effect. Yeah. So it's basically like if you can bring the story in a much more cohesive manner. From yeah. All I the mean things. that one's going to be. I hate to say it, but that one's going to be more less data model. But the data model's good because you'll have it. Um, but it's going to be more about how you sell. Yeah. It's this tough because like right now I'm doing a lot of uh, my quote unquote blog posts are actually like my previous projects. And I'm basically thinking by location and saying what that project was, what we did with it, and everything else. What you do is you tag the visuals along with the location, mm -hmm. along with the architect and your designers you dealt with, and you kind of put it all together into a nice story or cohesive. Right. Image. Yeah, and that's kind of what you're doing as a case studies. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Sorry, Colleen, yeah. Well, it just sounds kind of listening to that. And you had mentioned at the start of your kind of, as you were kind of describing things about having things in common. I think a photographer is having like a portfolio. It's a port. It is a portfolio, yeah. Talking about, uh, hey, if I'm that developer, um, I've got something that's on the beach as well. So I would like to see projects that have been done on the beach, and then maybe somebody else is. I'm looking for someone, but I'm in the mouth of the beach. I can see that as yeah, definitely being something where you would do like a faceted search thing for the architects that would actually drive them into an area where that's, I need to see some of your examples of renderings at beaches, renderings yeah. at condos, renderings at yeah, this. Like, well, let's take interiors, for example. Yeah. So we have a kitchen, we have a living room, we have a den, we okay. have a lanai. All these things people look for, too. So it's actually by specific like location type, like from interior or area search. So you're absolutely right. We're doing that kind of uh, through tags and through. I'm not sure if I'm doing it through categories or not right now. You would. It's really kind of. Well, and that's kind of the thing is you really that's going to be your biggest piece is organization. Yeah. Is going to be how to group the stuff so that it's more useful, because uh, like she said, environment, mountains, uh, cities, uh, like urban, um, beaches, desert. <laughs> But you know you get where it comes from. Um, educational, that kind of thing. Take those kind of categories that actually hit like those kind of particular architectural jobs, and then take them a little step further and go, what are the kind of spaces that they are? Are they a kitchen space? Are they a, you know, living space? Are they a classroom? Are they a, you know, bar? Are they a, you know, that kind of stuff? And then just keep breaking them down into the most finite degree that you can that most architects would be interested in because that's kind of how architects think and let that be your faceted search to get them to a rendering that they see they go okay yes I would buy them hire them because that's really what you're trying to do is yes the way you present your renderings is incredibly important but giving your end users who's, who are coming to your site the ability to find what they're looking for quickly and get to the information piece that they're looking for quickly is the most important thing. Because if they're trying to find a visual renderer who does kitchens, and I want to see an example of one of their kitchen renderings, I want to be able to find that within you know, a couple of clicks and boom. The problem is, though, is that a lot of architects go by their location. So they're like, I want to know what the, 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 a rendering company in, in Savannah, Georgia, right? So they'll actually do by location first and then by that because there's thousands of kitchen renders all over. Yeah. Millions everywhere. Like yeah. photographers, there's millions of photos of kitchens. Well, but I need to find a photographer that is in my area. So they want to go by the area first and then they want to find those things. Well, I mean, are, are you... Are your renderers nationwide? Do they have artists in different cities and locations? Yeah, my, my renderers are international. So okay, yeah. then you have... Then there you go. Your organizational is one thing, but your other part is the directory of renderers. <laughs> the renderings are their portfolio. Yeah. The actual thing that you're selling is your directory. Again, we're back to the, the directory concept. Because you're right. They want to work with someone that either they can speak with directly, because they're there in their city with them, 
or they're looking for someone that they can look at their portfolio and say, I don't, I, I'll work with this person remote, I don't care. So your primary, your primary content is actually your directory, not the renderings. So hang on, I'll leave that one there and I'll move, ah, what happened? <laughs> Sorry, you didn't see that. I'm freaking out because my computer's freaking out, it's not me. Okay. What time are we at, by the way, guys? Are you guys getting in the sleepy mode? <laughs> 716. Okay. When do you guys normally wrap out of here? Eight. Eight? Okay. That long, huh? <laughs> For me, maybe. So. Yeah. Coffee's too it's too late to drink coffee. I'm old. So don't want to destroy my gut. Okay. So we have like types of locations. That sort of thing. See, I think you can kind of get the pressure. I'll flesh this out some more. Okay. So. Yeah, I know it can be a little bit. Of a, yeah. Yeah, I mean that one's. It's it's one of those kind of things. Is like I could, I do data models almost all day long, uh, and what I do for support because people come in and they'll come talk to me and they go, well, I'm trying to like build this structure and I've got this and I've got that and I don't know how to make this work and I'll back them up a little bit and I'll ask what the purpose of their site is. And then I'll find out a little bit more information. I say, well, you've got you you've got your stuff backwards. You focused on your trainers, and that's not what's important. The most important thing is the classes you're selling. Nobody cares about the trainer; they just care about the classes you're selling. Or in the case of like your advertisers. So, yeah. And that's I I do that all the time. That's my thing. So I I worked in databases for 20 plus some odd years, and I did data analysis for just as much. So I'm used to asking uh, people who know absolutely nothing about computers how to find a structure or a process or a business flow. So, any other models you guys want to build while I'm here? <laughs> any questions? Yes? Well, I just uh, got the okay to build a very simple, flat website for a cooperative art gallery. Okay. And a co-op gallery is run by the artists. Right. And we're looking at something in excess of, I think it's two or three hundred artists okay. at this point. Um, it is going to be the public face of an organization that is their clients are organizations. In other okay. words, the Naples Art Association okay. is a member of the Arts Council. And the Benina Art League is a member of the Arts Council. The basic thing that we want to look at is we have this space in Coconut Point that we allow members of those organizations, the client organizations, we allow them to exhibit and sell their artwork. Okay. So we've got the artists mm -hmm. and we've got potential buyers. Right. Art buyers. Mm -hmm. The patrons. Right. And those are the two uh, constituencies that we've got that we're trying to reach and what we're trying to do is get them together. Okay. Um, and I haven't had, I found out about this about three o'clock this afternoon so I haven't had a chance to think about it too much. <laughs> um, one of the big things that we're going to have to worry about is we need to set up a, <clears throat> and I, in the past it's been done as a calendar but we've got uh, four or five days a week. We have uh, artists who have agreed to come in and babysit the gallery. Mm, so okay. they're, they're the people that are selling okay. the art. And so one of the things that this site is going to have to do is be able to organize Who's supposed to be where when? <laughs> okay. Now, in the past, we've done it as a calendar. Calendars are usually the best places for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, and yeah. 
now the uh, website package that I agreed to use is pretty, uh, it's, it's the simplest of the network solutions uh, <laughs> sites and their packages. Okay. And um, so I think I'm, they, they're already using constant contact. So I'm thinking about using uh, the constant contact calendar function yeah. that I don't know much about yet. Yeah. Uh, to take care of their calendar. And then we'll have basically flat pages. Nothing's ever flat. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I love when people say that, but no, nothing is ever flat. Well, we start out flat and then we wrinkle it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know that right off the bat, you've got artists in your cooperative. So you've got gallery spaces, you've got, um, you know, specific shows because, you know, their, their portfolio of work. Well, that's one of the wrinkles that we're... I mean, are you, are you selling individual art? Are you doing an e-commerce site to sell individual no, art? No, okay, no, so no, they're no, having no, to go into the space, visit the space, go to the gallery. Okay, yeah. but you're still, are you showing pictures of that art that's going to be from a particular artist? We will, to a certain extent, we're usually looking at hanging 100 paintings at a time. Right, okay. So it's, we can't do that too much. Okay. Well, we can. You we could. Want to decide. No, you wouldn't want to do that. I mean, that my thought would be is that typically, I mean, the way I've always seen it done is you you organize shows, and that's that's what's oh, currently okay. at a site at a at a gallery at a particular time yeah, is a particular there will be show. A certain amount of that. Yeah. Um, basically, we just change the art every month. Okay. Um, but we do have uh, this year we've been bringing in people. Uh, some of the art leagues to go in and do a, a little mini show. They take a corner of the gallery, half a dozen or a dozen paintings, okay. pull them up, take care of it themselves. Okay. Well, and. Hmm. So they throw a lot at you. No, I mean, it's, it's, you've got a complicated methodology here, but I mean, the main thing comes down to is, is that you're trying to connect buyers to artists or, or to their art. Buyers to the art. Or well, we want to get the buyers into the gallery. To display their art. Well, we want to get the buyers to get into the gallery to sell the art, because that's the only reason the artists have a display here. Okay. So the buyers? The buyers are the ones that are actually selling the art for the artists? No. no. Okay. There's artists and there's buyers. Right. We'll call them patrons. Patrons. Okay. okay. Patrons. All so right. we've got artists and we've got patrons. <coughs> And we want to try to reach both of them. The artists come in because they want a chance to sell their art. They can't do it out of their closet. Right. They can make art in their laundry room, but they can't sell it. Okay. So you need some events, really, I think, to draw patrons in. Okay. Then maybe yeah. they wouldn't just. Thing, you know what I mean? I yeah, because that's that. gonna be that's gonna be your biggest thing is like I mean for me if I was trying to sell this and try to get it the biggest thing I would do is be looking for other restaurants and wine shops mm -hmm. and things along those lines that would like to pair with you or partner with you to do a gallery night uh, mm -hmm. and then eat the artist. <laughs> Not eat the artist, but I mean, meet the artist, but also oh, have like food and drinks and stuff like that there. So that if it's an event, if it's more of an event, it's going to be easier to get people in at a specific yeah. time frame. And that's also going to make it easier for someone who's a patron to want to be there at a specific mm -hmm. time frame. And then if you let them know that their window <coughs> to have to, is to watch it is three hours before the event and a couple of hours after the event, then you've got that entire window covered. Yeah, I don't, that's outside of my mandate. Okay. <laughs> I totally get that, but I mean, if you're trying to sell it, that's what yeah, I would well, say. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, but I mean, that's, I, you're, basically what you're looking at is gallery space, artist portfolio, and patrons. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main thing, I mean, are, I don't know if you're listing the patrons on your site or not. No, we wouldn't do that. Okay. Then the primary, then you... It's information you need to keep up about them. Well, the same the media uh, or press 
Yep, same stuff again. Events. Yeah. 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 Is it open? Yeah, I've seen the space before. Is it open the same hours? Excuse me. Do you have a question? Yeah, I've seen the space before. Is it open the same hours as the mall or no? It's going to no, vary based on which artist there. It's open, uh, I think, four days a week and from basically 11 to 5. So that's not, I was supposed to not open night, at night time at all. Oh. And so are they having any events right now at all? <coughs> or not? Uh, not of the kind of thing that he's talking about. Yeah, I mean. What they're setting up, what they're doing is they will have, uh, okay, there are like 19 organizations that belong to the council. Okay. And so what, <laughs> what we're doing is we're having an organization like the Benita Art League yeah. come in, uh, set up their own little space right. within this monster space. Yeah. You know, uh, so you've got space. basically all your existing artists that are part of the cooperative have their art space right. up, and then you've got a special little area that's there for that particular visiting council member right. to have their art space up, and then also be a docent for that night. Right. Okay. That afternoon. Or that after that that time block. So yeah. So yeah, I mean you're honestly the best thing you can do on that one is to um, match council members to the calendar. And that's pretty much it. But you're selling the space on you've gotta there's gotta be some kind of an event to promote them or they're not gonna wanna do it. Yeah. Yeah, so that wasn't your mission, but I would go back and say well, hey, that, we had a that, that, that brainstorming session here with yeah. the professionals. Yeah, we, we had lots yeah. of professionals here that made a lot of suggestions yeah, for you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they're, they're already doing that with the member organizations. Yeah, Colleen? And she has a question so, about that. you know, that's part of, that is part of my mandate. Oh, okay. Okay. It sounds like it's a bit. Well, Colleen, uh, that's a uh, stand up talk. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, it sounds to me a little bit like going back to the, to the photographer with the portfolio. Um, can you categorize the art, categorize the type of, yep. you know, are some people into modern, some people into classic, some people into totally. such yeah. beautiful, well, like, kind yeah. of feature? Yeah, because then you've got more reasons to promote the artists, and then they're going to be more interested in being part of the cooperative. You've got to be a way to promote maybe the artists at the council so that they have a reason to be part of the of that as well and that's kind of what it all comes down to is you're promoting the art that's really what it really comes yeah. down to you're promoting the art and the artists and the more that you can give them a directory of artists and then also organize it and stuff and do case studies review not case studies but features mm -hmm. um, so we could maybe have a list of the artists mm -hmm. that are there this month yeah Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And the mediums they work in, maybe their style, that kind of thing. So we might even have a, uh, an artist page. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely have an artist page. <laughs> well, I mean, people love to promote their stuff. About two, three hundred artists. I mean, yeah, but I mean, that's the thing about it is like, if the artist sends in a quick little block bio, six or seven pictures of, or samples of their work, and then their information, boom, you've got an artist page right there. That's like instant content. Yeah. I guess the question is, can you do all of that with network solutions, or should you be doing it in WordPress? I, yeah, you, you'd have to be doing that in WordPress. Yeah, from this viewpoint, you can't do that with a flat website. No. Well, not without a lot of work. <laughs> you can. You can, but it's not. That's a lot of work. You can do it in HTML. You can by hand. I've done that as well, but no, yeah. no. But it's 2018 and not 1999. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. See. All right. Well, um, yeah. there was a question before. She had one too, I think. Okay, go ahead. I just wondered. So the one that you showed, where they had the eye doctor thing, what exact plugin were you using there? What custom post type plugin? Uh, pods. Oh, it was yeah. Pods. Okay. I always use pods because honestly, it doesn't care what your theme looks like. Okay. I I doesn't give a I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Watch my language. Thank you. <laughs> Family talk. It doesn't care one bit what your what your theme looks like, and I don't have to do any code. That's okay. the biggest piece of it. I don't have to do any code at all. I use our pods templates, and I just plop, and I'm done. 
you know. Is there a free version of that? Yeah, Pods is free. Oh. I, actually, if you want, I mean, are we kind of wrapping up? Or are we? Right, I was kind of, uh, but. Uh, yeah, get you, one more question and then we'll. I have kind of a small question. If you have a directory, do you use that too? Also? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, because it's simple. Uh, when it comes down to it, a directory is, you know, it's a name, it's fields, it's information, but then you're also organizing it by different organizational types. So, like, depending on what kind of directory it is, like the yoga directory that I told you about, uh, my other co-organizer in St. Pete, she had to do a yoga directory for the state, and all, really all it was was the teachers, uh, they wanted their phone number, and what styles of yoga they did, and that was it. And it was like, it took her three seconds to build the post type and you know <laughs> <laughs> so, can I see that again <laughs> yeah. data in there you know it's a, so. I don't suppose you can show a demo or something like oh that. from the pods yeah well we can certainly do another how and a half let's having that. yeah that would be easier on an yes but I have an entire talk on that one and there's a video okay. for it too right, so right, that's what right, yeah. that video that's on the link at the bottom of the pods oh, page yeah. that one is the one oh, yeah. I was talking about yeah so I, I know one. there was before the, I was just out the room and you had a question about how long this gonna take um, well when we talked you said you, you need an hour hour and a half kind of thing yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, typically when I like on this one, that's kind of why I do the directory thing because I let it. I try to get as many of these little guys in as I can, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them, which is not bad. Most of the time when I do these, I get about that many. I've done this uh, talk about three different times, and I try so, to get. So, um, because we're new and I see a lot of new faces, um, maybe we can go around the room and then have uh, another round of questions. So just introduce ourselves. Yeah. Um, what you're doing? Um, well, I mean, I don't want to keep us here too long because it is 7:30. So right. yeah, and right. I'm, well, well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll wrap, wrap up the talk. Oh, yeah, okay. let me wrap up the talk, and then okay. we can like yeah. kind of just like keep it open talking and stuff. Right. So let me get back in here. That's what I was my question. Yeah. Was kind of do a half another half an hour. I have a half an hour. I don't know if I have like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where do you get help with pods? Uh, on our website. It's at pods.io forums. We have a Slack chat, which is what I hang out on all day long. And I answer questions like as you come in, that kind of a thing. That's also the link there. And you and do that. Mm -hmm. You answer questions. I do answer questions pretty much. Yeah. That's my job. Uh, WordPress.org. Uh, we have a website. I'm sorry, a, a Twitter page there. Twitter is Pods Framework. Our YouTube, which is starting to actually have a lot more information. And this video is actually going to be on that. YouTube is at youtube.com pods framework. We are a free plugin with free support. Uh, we believe that price shouldn't be an obstacle in getting you started building powerful data driven websites. That's why pods is free. Uh, just because we're free doesn't mean we're not valuable. Mm -hmm. If you find value from the websites you build with pods, please consider giving back to the project by joining Friends of Pods. And that's kind of our donation site. We're a donation model. Um, we have like, uh, for especially for web developers, if you donate on a monthly basis or something like that or join at our lowest level, you can get access to uh, discounts on different uh, plugins and other hosting sites and stuff like that. So that's how we work our system. We don't believe in charging because, like I said, uh, probably shouldn't be a factor to get started doing what you guys are doing. You know, too many of the times when you get started doing web development, you've got to pay for this plugin and that plugin and hosting and this and that. It's just one more thing, and we don't want to be a block for that. So that's why. Thank you. All right.